Money in the bank is right around the corner, and hey, did you know that we're doing a watch party for it? We are, you idiot, and you should tune in at home to watch it. While we do it, we'll be doing it live. It'll be very, very good. Now, we've made a list who we think should and shouldn't win the briefcases. Check that out from last week. But now, for a slightly more general list of things we'd like to see from the show itself. I'm Adam from WrestleTalk, and here are nine fantasy booking pitches for Money in the Bank 2023. Number one, the women's winner holds on to it for more than one day. This really doesn't feel like it should be a radical fantasy fantasy booking, but it would somehow break with five years of tradition. Weirdly enough, the only time WWE decided to not have their women's winner cash in within 24 hours was for the first ever Miss Money in the Bank, Carmella, who held her briefcase for 287 days, which is also the longest ever gap between winning the case and cashing in. What on paper should be the most shocking time to cash in has now become expected, rote, boring. Besides, the briefcase holder can often benefit from holding fire and actually, you know, be pictured with the case for a little bit. It can help them develop their character, especially when they're an emerging star who isn't quite a main event level yet. So come on, Trips, I know you'll likely have that old sod Vince breathing down your neck to do it again, pal, but instead, shut that laptop, put your phone on airplane mode, and let us see Money in the Bank's end credits without a single cash in maybe this year. Number two, the collapse of the Judgment Day is the new Bloodline story. While the talk of the town in WWE is the ongoing dissension of the Bloodline, this week's Monday Night Raw saw the beginning of perhaps WWE's next big story, the collapse of the Judgment day. With Finn and Seth looking like a lock for London, there's no doubt going to be some tension built in the Judgment Day ranks between now and July 1st. One, for Finn interfering in Priest's World Heavyweight Championship opportunity despite his specific request not to do so. And two, for Finn effectively leapfrogging Priest on the WHC pecking order and claiming that big pay-per-view match instead for himself. While resentment is sure to build between Finn and Priest, perhaps the punishment of the Judgment Day will try to bury the hatchet and help his boy beat Seth regardless, only for the exact same thing to happen that happened to him, attempting to help, ultimately backfiring. Whatever happens, expect the bill to Money in the Bank to see the beginning of the end of Judgment Day as we know it, which I guess would mean that the Judgment Day of Judgment Day is upon us. Number three, Reigns and Solo win. While WWE has managed to make the Bloodline saga peak sports entertainment once again, it still does need to end, ideally, at SummerSlam. Anyway, as for Money in the Bank, while we could theoretically see Jimmy versus Roman, in all likelihood, we'll see Roman and Solo take on the Usos instead. As much as I'd like to see Jimmy get some shine in this match, I think instead we should see the tag contest used as a catalyst for the true MVP of this whole thing, Jay Uso, to get his big one-on-one -on -one title match at SummerSlam. And how should that happen? After winning their tag match, Roman should take things up a notch, beating the ever-living tar out of Jimmy in front of a handcuffed Jay. This would rule Jimmy out and allow for Jay to embark on a revenge mission against the Tribal Chief, concluding at SummerSlam and bringing it wonderfully back full circle to how it began between Jay and Roman. As for Solo, he should do what his name suggests and go be his own man, not taking Roman or Jay's side. The bloodline will be over, all at the hands of main event Jay Uso. Number four, LA Knight wins. Let me talk to you. LA Knight's ever-growing popularity is undeniably turning heads in WWE and for sure, to his Money in the Bank qualification. However, while the company is throwing us a bone, we instead want the whole damn carcass. We want, nay, we need Knight to walk out of the O2 as the men's Money in the Bank win. It's been said before, but Knight really is the total package. Aside from being 40 years old, is every single thing the WWE look for in a top star. Besides, AJ Styles was 39 when he won his first WWE Championship. Bobby Lashley was 44. There's absolutely no reason why Knight can't be pushed and utilized as a top player in the company for at least the next four to five years. But in order for that to happen, WWE needs to stop and listen to the fans pull the trigger now. Don't dilly dally. Despite not being London Knight, although that would be a killer gimmick, the pop Knight would get from the O2 would genuinely be rapturous. However, if you wanted to go the other way, I do have a plan B. Or rather, a plan D. Number five. Dominic Mysterio wins. Now, alternatively, if WWE really wanted to be dicks about it, they could give us all the exact opposite of what we just asked for, that being Dom Dom Dominic Mysterio nabbing that briefcase from under Knight's nose and the mega heat that would surely come with it. Granted, Dom isn't there yet as a main event guy or as a believable world champion, but I just want to have him lurking around the World Heavyweight Championship scene for a year, so I just want it. He's so annoying. Theory kind of did this last year, only much less effectively, but Dom is the second best heel in all of wrestling right now and could tease cash in to be a constant looming, did I say annoying presence for a very long time, perhaps the entire year span of the contract. Number six, EO Sky wins. I feel like we're all banging the same drums repeatedly, but EO Sky is ready to be pushed. She's ready to step out from Bailey's shadow and prove why she may just be the best female pro wrestler in the entire company right now. EO star making performance at Backlash proved as much and she's ready for many more to come. I for one wouldn't be mad at seeing EO get another crack at the 
Championship or Fenderware Jealous Bailey or best of all take on Asuka in a series of bangers or just Japanese promos they're always fun and you know what while I can see WWE going the Becky Lynch or Trish route for Money in the Bank I'm quietly confident Io would get the job done or again WWE will set fire to our hopes and dreams and have Bailey win it instead either way if not both give us at least one of Io or Knight winning and I will die a happy man although I don't want to die number seven Imperium statement match Gunther's trusty jacket holders Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci have always played second fiddle to the ring general thus far in their main roster run and yes I know that's their role they're henchmen they're lackeys but they're so much better than that and their body of work has proven as such remember Imperium versus Undisputed Era yeah exactly they've had great matches but most of them have been trios bouts featuring Gunther and they need their own shine and it seems if they may get that money in the bank with the pair of Kaiser and Vinci seemingly set for a tag match against undisputed tag champs Zayn and Owens while I don't necessarily think Imperium should win although it would be rad to see them with all the gold I do think this should be their moment we should get a match of an NXT takeover caliber and their breakout performance could set them apart from being just Gunther's backup dancers into something a little bit more special number eight Gunther batters Matt Riddle speaking of Imperium while Kaiser and Vinci should fall short in their pursuit of the gold the ring general most certainly should not follow the same fate I mean he's just three months away from beating the long-standing IC title record of the Honky Tonk Man, a record that WWE realistically shouldn't have let run for so long, so yeah, Gunther's not losing, he's gonna beat that record. I'm sorry, Riddle, but a Valiant Stallion performance is the best you can hope for at Money in the Bank. You ain't getting the W in this one, I'm afraid. However, that's not to say that this couldn't be filled with fun hope spots, just like Ali's attempt in Saudi was, perhaps even more so considering Riddle's legit pedigree and past title successes. The former UFC star will undoubtedly be able to dish out just as much punishment as he takes, which will make for a truly fun and hard-hitting watch. And number nine, Bianca Belair and Street Profits turn heel. Following Bianca Belair's move to SmackDown, I've got to say things were looking bleak. Not only was the Raw Women's title on the wrong show against something they bafflingly still haven't fixed, but a rather stale Bianca Belair was being drafted alongside many of the people we'd seen her devour over the past nine months, Bailey, Io, Sky, and Asuka. However, to pretty much everyone's surprise, Belair lost her first title defense since drafting to the blue brand. Now a rematch of Money in the Bank is almost a lock, but please, oh please, WWE don't go backwards. Instead, have Belair take a second loss to Asuka, have it be the catalyst for Belair snapping and turning heel. A Bel Air heel run has been rumoured to be in the pipeline for a while, but interestingly, she may not be alone in her venture to the dark side, as her hubby Montez Ford and Angelo Dawkins may be set to join her. A new faction of Bel Air and the Prophets would be a lot of fun, and a change that all three could use, in all honesty. While we haven't seen Ford and Dawkins as a heel collective, it's an easy picture to paint. They're both more than charismatic enough to make it work. Bel Air has also flourished in a heel role in NXT before, so any way you slice it's a recipe for money, ratings, all that good stuff. So hopefully, we'll see it happen in London. And that's our list what would you like to see happen at money in the bank let us know in the comments and check out the list we did last week for our thoughts on who should and who shouldn't walk out with those briefcases and a top 10 of who shouldn't it's a fusion dance list hooray i'm adam from wrestle talk and here are our top 20 wrestlers who should and shouldn't win money in the bank should number one Co